Hey lovers, how are you doing? You are hanging in there like some kind of flippin' legend. You didn't know if you could do it, but you're doing it. You are smashing it. And maybe smashing some crockery as well. <laughs> Hashtag the new normal. Okay, so here is the question on everybody's lips. How are we gonna quarantine and how am I gonna homeschool without all of us ending up hating each other's guts? It's a real question. I'm hearing you. So today I wanna share a little trick that you can actually download. <laughs> yeah, you can download it and print it off. Actually, the printers are shut. <sighs> You're gonna be doing a lot of real life writing with a pen and paper. Gosh, I hope you've got pens and paper. You might have to use some of your toilet roll. <sighs> oh, you could always collect some dry leaves. Mm -hmm. And some of your blood is ink. Are we at that stage yet? I don't think we're at that stage. Don't panic guys, we're not at that stage yet. It's okay. Okay, so one of the things, I might have been Googling this during a very tricky phase in our marriage because me and Tim have been married for like ever and it might have been along the same lines as the uh, title for this video and one of my favorite marriage people or relationship people, she's called Esther Perel, she is so great. She has so much good insight and wisdom for relationships, usually like marriages but I think a lot of it applies to just general relationships as well. This camera is very wonky. I don't know why it's so wonky. Oh no, you can see all the rubbish. Okay, all right, so, so you can still see it, but I don't mind, look, keeping it real, okay? It's hard to keep your house tidy when you're homeschooling. Is anybody else finding that? That is a real, true life thing. Housework and homeschooling, they're not the best combination. So Esther Perel says that in order to stay happily married or happily together for a long time, you have to cultivate curiosity. She talks about curiosity like the linchpin of a good relationship. I don't know what a linchpin is, but it sounds very important. And that's because life can get very boring when you just feel like you know somebody very well and sometimes you're even in the same room while they're like going to the toilet. Ugh. And in order for a relationship to feel alive, there has to be like an element of curiosity and finding out new stuff about that person that you didn't ever know. And I fully think that goes for kids as well. And here's a real practical little way that you can inject a little bit of curiosity into the relationship with all of these people that you're stuck in this room with. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go grab it one sec. Okay, so ours uh, live in, it's a bit random, but they live in a pot with loads of nail varnish and even a kazoo. Um, but what it is, is little slips of paper that um, I downloaded from a website, which I'm gonna link to below. And they have questions on them. It's ideally for kids. And, oh, this is a heavy one to begin with. So they're basically just like, Loads of questions, you cut them up and then you put them in a hat and then you pull them out and you ask each other and you go around. You might do it at dinner time and um, we did this as a way to make dinner time super fun um, and something that everybody just enjoyed doing together. So this one I first pulled out says, what will the world be like in 10 years? What will be the same? What will be different? That to me feels like a very intense question for right now. Okay, and then there's this one. What was your first thought when you woke up today? And they're just like super, super cute little questions. And it just leads to really fun conversation that you could never have just like made up. And so I highly recommend going to that place, printing them out or writing them on dry leaves with your blood, if you're at that stage. And then there's also this kind of question that comes up about what to do with like your really tricky kids your kids that are a little bit like a kind of never filled up vessel that just always want a little bit more or um, that are always a little bit wild or always like bouncing off the walls. And um, I have had this experience and, and you can start to really feel a bit resentful or like you've just had enough of them. And, um, and I was having this experience uh, a couple of years ago and I just heard this in really strong voice in my head and it just said lean in and I remembered that quote that says the children who need the most love ask for it in the most difficult ways or something like that like often the kids that need us the most do behaviors that seem to kind of like repel or reject us 
And so I really want to invite you to just maybe think on that. I'm not going to tell you what to do or anything. Um, but have a little bit of a think, see if that is kind of truthful for you. Um, for me, I decided to just write lists of all of the things I love about my kid. Um, I, I then carved out time in the day where I could just hang out purely with her. I decided to really cultivate a curiosity about the stuff that she loves and do as much of it as I can with her. I decided to just um, randomly tell her the things I love about her, I decided to like write her little love notes and just like really kind of try to pursue her um, and, and kind of draw her close to me and really see if I could fill up that cup. And it was so revolutionary. I don't even know if her behaviour changed necessarily, but um, for me I went from like a sense of like, oh I can't handle to actually like wanting to advocate for her and protect her and just kind of like really really hold her fiercely like some kind of mama bear so yeah that's a little bit of a point about um how to not hate i guess the really tricky members in your family i think brene brown says some good stuff about that as well about really leaning in yeah maybe she was the big strong voice i heard in my head <laughs> I'm very, very wonky. Why am I so wonky? I don't know why I'm so wonky today. And also just another quick thing about the kind of like curiosity, cultivating curiosity about your children um, and anybody else you're stuck in quarantine with. In order for you to lean in and, and be who you want to be to them, you're going to need time by yourself and just extending that invitation to you once more to keep thinking about how you can nurture your heart and care for yourself in... Oh, I'm sounding a bit breathless. Oh god. <laughs> I think it's because I'm just talking really fast. Don't worry, don't panic. But yeah, think about your self-care and filling up your cup so that you can start to meet the cups of others. And also, another little note, self-care isn't always just like having a bath or something like that. Sometimes self-care looks like self-actualization, which means achieving something that's really important to you. It might be writing a blog post or writing a letter or making some art or, or emptying the compost. <laughs> Is that self-actualization? I don't know. So many questions today. But yeah, just uh, another invitation for you to think about how you can prioritize being super kind and compassionate to your own self. Yeah! Through self-care, we will get through this global pandemic. <laughs> okay, sending you so much love. Keep in touch with me. Tell me in the comments how you are managing to survive life in a small place with these people. <laughs> if you've got tips and tricks you want to share with others, I'd love, love, love to hear from you. Remember to hit subscribe. And if you are loving what I've got to say about life without school, please do share this channel with your loved ones around you who are also new to this whole bandango. Mwah!